today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Body language expert specializing in human behavior and facial recognition, Susan Constantine. Jury consultant, Susan Constantine. Jury consultant and body language expert, Susan Constantine, joins me now. Susan Constantine is a body language expert. Susan Constantine has trained police in picking up on involuntary movements. Got jury consultant and body language expert, Sue Constantine. Hi, my name is Susan Constantine, and I have prepared a written statement for you that I would like to read. I am a human behavior expert specializing in deception detection. I have a master's degree in psychology. I am a licensed mediator and have certifications in deception detection, investigative and interrogative interviewing, scientific statement analysis, and facial recognition training. I am often retained by attorneys in both criminal and civil cases to analyze jurors during jury selection and to evaluate videos and deposition tapes to detect deception. I have developed training courses that are, uh, that are approved for continuing legal education in over 30 states in the United States. I have been hired to train Department of uh, Defense Inspector General, the Department of Children and Families, Public Defender's Offices, State's Attorney's Offices, State Bar Association, Judicial Associations, Mediation and Arbitration Associations, International Law Enforcement and Intelligent Agencies, Law Schools and Universities around the U.S. I was retained and compensated to review a video featuring a 15-year-old Israeli boy named Nathan, who is sitting next to Rabbi Levy. The video is in Hebrew, and the first 30 minutes have been translated into English. I have not been asked to verify the veracity of the translation into English, and for the purposes of my professional opinion, have accepted the English translation at face value. It is important to note that I am an impartial and independent professional. I have no personal interest in this matter. Prior to this video statement, I have received several emails from individuals requesting my thoughts on this video. The party that paid for my review of this video and my video opinion, opinion made it very clear that their only interest in this is searching for the truth with respect to my opinion, irrespective as to what my opinion is. It should be noted that there were obstacles in reviewing the video due to the fact that I was watching the video in a foreign language and with English subtitles. Additionally, it is also challenging to analyze a person's truthfulness when they are being questioned by other parties while recounting the story. Throughout the video, Nathan was being queried by the rabbi seated next to him. And from an analysis point of view, this interfered with the flow of the recounting of the story. A more ideal setting would have been for someone to recount their experience or story without any interruptions. In the interest of full disclosure, I would also note that my profession is not an exact science. There's always room for error. But the successful conclusion of opinions rendered by myself and other professionals in this field range between 80 to 95% certainty. I would also like to point out that academic research studies have found that humans do not want to intentionally lie. And I'd like to point out that there's always truth in every statement people make because it is more difficult to lie than tell the truth. The reason is because it increases the brain's cognitive load, making it very difficult to maintain the lie over time. Rather, humans may skip over, conceal, fabricate, or withhold information for a variety of reasons. It is also important to note that research has also found that teens between ages 12 and 15 have developed a conscience and they feel guilty about lying. This is the age where teens do not want to disappoint their parents and desire to seek the approval from them. My opinion is thereby limited the context of the 38 minutes of the video that I have watched of the Hebrew video with English subtitles. In the light of the fourth going, it is my professional opinion that Nathan was not being deceptive and was truthful in recounting his experience to his visitation in heaven. 
In short, I do not believe that Nathan was making the story up. I was also added, uh, would like to add that dur during the certain details that Nathan recounts are less certain, as he was also uh, questioned by the rabbi for additional details. And the nature of the questions interrupted the free flow of Nathan's recounting of the story. Thus, I cannot state that all of Nathan's story was his own experience or whether the questions posed by the rabbi tainted the recounting of his experience. As an example, Nathan starts out speaking from first person using I and then switches to third person you. When queried by the rabbi a few times in the story, it appeared that he was seeking the rabbi's approval when Nathan looked at the rabbi when asking him questions and when asking for permission to continue. However, it remains my opinion that Nathan does in fact believe that he experienced a visitation in heaven and was not being deceptive in making this assertion. Other details recounting by Nathan are difficult to gauge from a truthful perspective due to the frequent queries by the rabbi. This is my statement and again my name is Susan Constantine and I am a behavioral analysis expert specializing in deception detection. Thank you so much and have a great day.